Now we're going to look at file I.O. as it pertains to .csv files. And once again, that stands for comma separated values. And all that means is that inside of the file, and these are usually very these these files look very raw in terms of the data that's in it. In the sense, inside of the file, you have numbers, and once again, these are numbers only. These files contain only numbers. Okay, um, and so when we talk about CSV files, uh, they only have numbers in them. And so if we did a file that looked like this, 2, 5, 7, and then um, 45, 99, 77, and then on the next line we do 1, 3, 42. Uh, this is a CSV file. And we save it as a .csv file. And the delimiter, the thing that's separating the values in this case, is the comma. That's the delimiter. You're going to see that uh, even more in the next video. But so these are comma separated values and that's why it's called a .csv file. Um, it also, these files um, are so popular that Excel is able to deal with them quite well. It's able to read them and actually save um, Excel files as .csv files. And so we'll look at that a little bit here as well. So we go into the MATLAB. Um, we're going to read them. And so before we read them, we're actually going to create the file. So what I'm going to do here is create a new file. It looks just like what I did on the board. 2, 5, 7. Next line um, is 45, 99, 77. And the next line is 1, 3, 42. Now if I were to save this as a .m file, a MATLAB file, MATLAB would pitch a fit because this, this this stuff doesn't mean anything, right? But if I come up here and say save, and then I go down here, you remember, recall that MATLAB is going to automatically save it as a .m file. But if I come down here and click that, and I say all files, then when I come in here and say, okay, save this as CSV underscore file dot CSV. Notice I put the dot extension in there. And so this allows me to dictate how this file is saved. So CSV underscore file dot CSV is going to save this file as a CSV file named CSV underscore file. And so I do that and it says it already exists. So I'll say yes to replace it. And so you see up in here, now I have a CSV underscore file dot CSV. Okay. Um, now I want to read that file. So notice it's a dot CSV file. My lab can handle that. It's okay. Uh, it's not a dot M file. And so MATLAB is looking at this just as a comma separated value file. So now let's go over here and I'm going to do the split screen thing again. Um, and actually, I don't want to do it that way. Uh, I'd rather do it. This way, let's, let's do the split screen. There we go. Okay, so now, um, push this over here. So now, what I'm going to do is actually read this file into a variable named a, and a is just going to be an array. Okay, and so I'm going to go over here and execute this. Um, and what I do, you notice that a now the variable in MATLAB A is equal to the data that's inside this file, this .csv file, right? And it is an array of type double. If you go over here in the workspace, there it is. It looks just like the arrays that we've created before. And so that is how you read in an, um, a, a CSV file. Now, a couple of questions. What if the data in the file is not rectangular? Keep in mind, we made a big point out of this fact that in an array, uh, the, the all rows have to have the same number of columns and all columns have to have the same number of rows. Okay, well, what happens if this CSV file, I come in here and let's say I put in 120, right, on the first row. So now my first row has four values and the other two only have three. So let's go and see how uh, MATLAB is going to handle this. Uh, so I save this, uh, change to my .csv file, 
I come back over here to my script and I run it and MATLAB did it with no problem. It did probably as you expected. It padded uh, it padded the zeros here. Okay. Likewise, if I had come in here and um, added another row that wasn't complete, so I put 56 down in that row and I save that CSV file, come back over here to my script and edit it. It padded that row with 56 and it was zeros as expected. So uh, your CSV file doesn't have to be rectangular, but MATLAB is going to pad it so it is rectangular. Uh, then the question is, remember, numeric values only. But what happens if I put um, a string in here? So if I come in here and put, I don't know, just the letter A uh, and save that. Um, you know, the question is, will MATLAB convert that to ASCII values? The answer is no. You get an error. Um, it is strictly um, numbers only. It's a numbers only club, if you will. Uh, and so that's uh, coverage of how you read a CSV file. Uh, let's go over here now and talk about how you would write to a CSV file. Uh, so uh, just like when you read, you do CSV read and you give it the file name. Um, with write, you do CSV write. But you got to have some data to write to it. So what I'm going to do is uh, make, make a, a variable B equal to, I'm use the magic function here and create the magic array that we talked about. Uh, if you notice, and then I'm going to say CSV write, give it a file name. I give it CSV underscore file underscore new. Uh, notice that file does not exist over here, so we're going to create it. Um, and just as with, the, and so um, I hit comma and then put the data in there. Okay. And so we're going to step through this because we want to make some illustrations here. Um, and so we start this and start execution here, stepping through. Uh, I do line six. I create B, which is my magic array, uh, a three, uh, three by three. I do line seven. And if you look over here, CSV file new just got created. So now let's look at that file. Uh, what's really cool here is I can either I right click, I can open it as a text file. There you go, it's opened as a text file. Uh, or I also could open it as outside of MATLAB in Excel. And so it's opened up here in Excel. And so I created this file in MATLAB, it's a .csv file. Uh, from the code and then now I have it in Excel format here and if you notice just if we want to do something uh, in Excel here once again you know, to test to see if this magic if the magic really exists here I can um, sum up the rows and sum up the columns um, and I'd have to do the diagonals by hand but I can see that this whole thing about this being a magic um, exists so uh, close that. No, I don't want to save it. Uh, so what I've done here in my CSV write is uh, I have created this data over here. It is generated in a file named CSV underscore file underscore new. Okay. Now the problem with this is whereas in Excel we had sheets and we could aim data and where it was going to go, with CSV write, uh, when I write to that file again it is going to uh, completely overwrite everything that uh, that I have in that file. So that is an issue, so be very careful with that. So I show this here on line 9 where I create um, variable C which is um, a magic array of uh, size 9 by 9 and then I'm going to write that to my file CSV file new and it's going to overwrite it's going to overwrite this data here. And so now, also notice that when we had an Excel file, if I tried to do this, I would get an error because this file is still open. But with CSV, when I do this, it doesn't give me an error. You know? But you notice the data didn't change automatically, but when I go back over here and click on this, it does. So with this CSV stuff, because these files are a lot simpler than Excel files, um, I do not have to close a file in order to write to it. I can just write to it and then when I access that file again, the data comes up. So uh, this is all the data here you see in, um, in the command window down here for variable C. Uh, once again, 
I could have op I can open this in Excel and there it is and just you know just for fun if I wanted to uh, if I wanted to do a sum of each row I could do that and it seems like rows adhere to this being a magic array and if I do the columns the columns do too but I would have to do diagonals to check to make sure but I, I, I think that they will be um, so that's how you read excuse me that's how you write to a, uh, a CSV file and I don't want to say that okay now I give an example uh, much like the example let me go back to single screen here I give an example much like the example I gave I gave um, when we did Excel so I'm going to read in a file um, in fact I'm going to read in a file uh, with this data here I'm going to open this as a text file and let me clean this up a little bit because I messed it up a little bit when I did examples let's clean this up 56. Okay, so that's my original. All right, I'm going to read this file in, and my example. I'm going to read this file in, and then I'm going to um, calculate the average of each column. And so, and then I'm going to prepare my output, and I'm going to uh, then write that file out to a file called CSV file new two. So let's do this uh, here. Uh, and if you notice, I want you to notice again that CSV file new two does not exist over here. So we're actually going to create that. So I want to uh, step through this. So I'm going to put a breakpoint there. So I'm going to read in the data uh, here on line seven. So I read in the data. And so variable data that has uh, what's the, the internals, what the data that's in that file. Uh, I'm going to calculate averages using my mean function. Keep in mind, it's going to calculate the average for each column. Um, so as I step through, now variable AVGS has the averages for each column. And now I'm going to prep my data by putting um, that averages on the bottom in row 4. So what I do is I figure out the size of my data. And then I say data at row. Because keep in mind, the data is still 3 by 3. So I really want to put it in row four. So I do data rows plus one because this value here rows is going to be three, and so it's rows plus one. So that's going to be the fourth row, and then all columns equals ABGS. So I've assigned that. Um, so when I do that here, uh, so here we have uh, rows and columns. Uh, rows is going to be three. Columns is going to be three. Um, you see that over here in the workspace, and then. Um, my data is now going to look like this when I um, I put those rows on the end. Excuse me, I put row I put the row of averages on in the fourth row of data, and now my data is prepared. So then I do a CSV write out to my new file with that data. So when I do that, you can notice up here the file just got generated, and if I look at this file, I can look at it as text. If I look at this file as text. There it is in row four. And if I look at it in MATLAB, excuse me, in Excel, I can see it there on row four. So taking data out of a CSV file, manipulating it, and then pushing it back out to another CSV file. Um, notice I had to do a new file. If I did it to the oh, to the original file, I would have overridden the data. And I may or may not want that. It depends on the circumstance. Next up, we're going to talk about delimited files um, and do similar things with those.